Hello, and welcome to another FAQ video. In this one, we're going to be talking about my text editor, which um, is a contentious topic in programming. Um, and I actually have a bit of a unique answer to mine, because uh, I wrote my own text editor. Uh, so let's, let's jump into that and talk about that for a bit. Um, so first, before we go any further, I'm going to kind of show you my text editor. And, um, you know, it is a terminal text editor. It's, uh, you know, has syntax highlighting, it has some features, it also can act like vim in some cases, you know, you can you have some commands that are vim-like, so you could sort, it's kind of useless on this file, of course, um, but it, it is a text editor, and I use it, and um, yeah, it works, and you can also find this text editor on GitHub, if you go to github.com slash isatilly slash babby, you can see the, the source there, and you know, contribute or, or download or install it or anything like that. Uh, it is written in Python and you might ask, well, wait a minute, isn't Python slow? And um, yeah, Python is not the fastest programming language. Um, but for the most part, it doesn't really matter for a text editor. Um, I've actually added some performance logging that shows how a how it might execute. And so if we open up like, you know, file.py, uh, oops, that's not, oops, <laughs> oh no. Uh, Matt actually clobbered that. <laughs> Whoops. So if we log it to log, you'll see that I can open up this file here, and I'll actually do the slowest thing in the editor right now, which is to trigger a syntax highlight of the entire file. And if I do that by jumping to the end of the file, you'll see that there's a noticeable lag there. And I can actually fix this. I haven't done it yet, but uh, it involves doing some background processing when the uh, text editor starts up and do some special threading and stuff, but even that like that is the absolute slowest the, the thing that you can do and that's you know highlight a thousand lines of code uh, serially in the foreground, but I haven't really done much performance optimization in Babby yet every single you know key press or Navigation actually triggers a full reparse of the whole screen um, And you know you can't really notice that it's you know particularly slow um, and so I haven't, you know, haven't bothered to optimize it yet. But if I were to write it in like a C or, you know, low level language, I wouldn't necessarily have as much overhead on the draw loop. However, you know, the draw loop isn't that slow, so it's not a huge deal. Um, but you can actually look at the performance log and like do some stuff and figure out like which things are slow. So you can see like startup is currently taking about 68 milliseconds, which, you know, isn't the best, but it's Python. So what, what do you expect there? Um, and that one jump to the end of the file took almost half a second. That really needs some improvement, but this can all be done in the background such that it's not a big deal after that. And then you can see like almost all the stuff that happened after that took less than a millisecond. You know, this took three milliseconds for some reason, but for the rest of it, it's it's pretty slow or pretty fast. <laughs> it's pretty slow. No, it's, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I've been working on this since about June of 2019 uh, when I got the crazy idea to write my own text editor. Uh, before that, I was using Nano, which is not the uh, <laughs> not the most fully featured text editor. Um, but you know, a lot of the uh, keyboard shortcuts and ideas of Babby are inspired from Nano, so there's there's a lot of shared functionality there. Uh, but I've been using Nano for you know some number of years, um, and that actually brings me to the first couple of reasons as to why I wanted to make my own text editor. Uh, the first of which being that Nano removed a feature in version, I want to say 3.0, it might have been 3.1, which I really like and wanted to continue using. Um, <laughs> I actually haven't implemented this feature in Babby yet, but you know it wouldn't be too difficult for me to do so. Uh, and that feature is code formatting. Um, in older versions of Nano, you could open up a file and type Control T, and that would invoke either the linter or a code formatter if it was installed. And so, you know, say you're writing, so say you're writing like Go code, where you always want to format with Go format, you could hook that up as a formatter and, you know, on Control T, it would format your code. Um, I also, <laughs> this is actually pretty funny, um, I made a code formatter for gitignore files. Um, oh, actually, I have deleted this, so let's see if I can find that. Uh, the history of nano rc slash git ignore dot nano rc. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I deleted this file recently because I've 
just switched to using Babby full time. Um, but I actually had a code formatter for git ignore files, which on control T would shell out to Vim. I know using using Vim as a code formatter for Nano seems a little bit silly, uh, but it would shell out to Vim, sort the file, write it, and then do this in a headless manner. Um, so it would allow me to you know control T and just auto sort a file. Uh, but they removed this formatter functionality, and you know I really wanted that functionality, so I decided you know I'm gonna I'm gonna try and write my own text editor. At the same time, I also wanted to learn Curses, which is a way, it's a, a terminal UI framework, uh, basically a cell-based drawing. And so that's that's actually how Babby, you know, draws to the screen. Um, you you write each of these to various cells. And I wanted to learn Curses, and oh boy, <laughs> have, I, have I learned a lot of Curses. There's... Uh, there's there's quite there's quite a lot to learn and honestly it's pretty complicated but I, I think I have a much better grasp on how to make terminal UIs using curses because of this project. Uh, another reason is I wanted my text editor to be reasonably hackable. Uh, Nano itself is written in several thousand lines of C and uh, even though I've contributed to Nano so I've actually <laughs> I've actually added functionality to uh, Nano itself, where um, this functionality here, if I do control plus the arrow keys, it allows you to jump a word at a time. Uh, I actually contributed that functionality to Nano, which is pretty cool. Uh, but Nano is, you know, a giant pile of C, and it's not the easiest to grok and really not easy to add features to. Um, so I wanted something that was a little bit more hackable, and Python is definitely a lot more approachable in that manner. And in fact, like, um, <laughs> this has actually been already kind of verified in that my Twitch chat has added several features to my text editor um, by, you know, just submitting a pull request that adds that functionality, which I think is really cool. Um, another reason has to do with licensing. Um, I'm not going to get into licenses here, but I tend to prefer permissive licenses. And Nano is GPL'd, so I can't really, well, I don't really want to contribute code to it because of the GPL, but that's a whole different discussion. I, I don't really want to have the, the licensing discussion here. Um, but yeah, that's most of the reasons that I created my own text editor. I now use it full time and um, it works pretty well. And another question that gets asked around this is, well, why don't you use an IDE? And actually, I did originally use IDEs. So I started, I think my first IDE that I ever used was Visual Studio proper. Uh, before that, I was using like Notepad and Notepad++ to do web development, which honestly is not the best <laughs> choice there. Uh, but I used Visual Studio when I was working on some C Sharp code in probably around 2010-ish. Um, I really liked it. Visual Studio is amazing. It basically just like, you know, tab complete, write all your code for you. Uh, you get nice jump to definition, nice refactoring tools, nice code quality tools. Like it's, it's basically what I would want out of an IDE if I were only working on a single project. And, uh, you know, if that project were one of the languages that's well supported by Visual Studio. Uh, the next IDE that I used after that was Eclipse to write Python code. And Eclipse is not great at writing Python code, but it was, you know, it was enough to be productive on it. Um, I switched from in Eclipse to IntelliJ. This was before PyCharm existed. Um, IntelliJ had some Python support, and I was using that full time. Uh, this is when I worked at Yelp. And the time that I switched <laughs> from IntelliJ to Nano was right around that time. Um, I used to go home for, well, I still do, I guess, basically now. Uh, I would go home for uh, holidays in December, uh, you know, Christmas, etc. And uh, during that time, I would usually either work remote or I would take the time off. At that time, I was working remote. And I was working on Yelp main, which is a very, 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 very large code base, somewhere around like 5 million lines of Python and you know a million lines of JavaScript and various other spatterings of languages as well. Um, and using IntelliJ with SSHFS across the country was not really manageable. Basically, you know, slurping down several gigabytes of code such that an IDE could index it all was never actually catching up. And actually it triggered a bunch of crashes and like the IDE would freak out and everything would freeze. And it, it was basically like a really bad development experience and almost unusable. And so I switched back to a terminal editor, which I had briefly learned in college just so that I could get by on the... Uh, the hosted Linux machines, you know, you'd SSH in and do some of your schoolwork and then, you know, be done with that there. And I had learned Nano briefly there. Um, and so while I was working remote, I was using Nano full time. And I realized that uh, as I bounce around to a bunch of different projects, not just Yelp main, but other projects as well, 
uh, that context switching in an IDE was wasting a lot of my time. And if I could just stay in the terminal the whole time, I was much more productive. And so I switched to using Nano full time. Um, and I had been using Nano ever since then until, you know, <laughs> like February of 2020 when I switched to using Babby. Um, but anyway, that kind of explains my editor history and why I use my own weird <laughs> text editor. Um, but hopefully that answers some of the questions and thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.